Today we're going to be unboxing the P67A UD5. This is a Core i7, Core i5 compatible, but this motherboard is only compatible with Generation 2 chips on socket 1155. So it features the Intel P67 chipset and it also features some gigabyte innovations such as delivering maximum CPU power. So what maximum CPU power means is that if you can provide the cooling for it, you can provide the power to get the maximum overclock out of your CPU. So this board, even though it's not their top tiered board, they do have a UD7 board as well, it features 20 phase power which is far more than I've seen on UD5 level boards in the past. It also features other gigabyte innovations such as their Ultra Durable 3, which is their thicker copper PCB, as well as their 333 acceleration, which means it's got USB 3, SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second, as well as their USB Power 3X. This is one that I'm personally very fond of because it allows you to use a hub, plug in as many as three fully powered USB devices and still not run out of power. Last but not least, They've got their on-off charge, which allows you to charge devices even while the system is powered off. You've got their dual BIOS technology, which makes it pretty much impossible to corrupt your BIOS and not be able to recover it. So let's go ahead and get this board opened up. It has a three-year warranty in the US and Canada, and I'm actually not sure what the warranty is elsewhere in the world, so you'll have to kind of uh, research that one on your own. We have a Dolby Home Theater sticker inside, first of all, and next we have the IO Shield, which is conveniently color-coded. So here's a hint right now. We already know that we're going to have uh, four USB 3.0 ports on the back panel. We have some gigabyte colored the traditional blue um, SATA cables. So we have two straight and two right angle. This, this is really important. Warning, socket 1155 is not the same as 1156. You cannot plug an 1156 chip into an 1155 board. You will damage either the board or the chip or both. Here's your utility DVD. Don't use this. Download the latest off the Gigabyte website as well as a user's manual, which I think you can also download off the Gigabyte website, but not necessary. Here's a multilingual installation guidebook where they give you some basics on how to install components in your board. Um, really though, if you want to know how to build a system, I probably wouldn't stick to just that little guide. I would actually look up my system building guide on my NCIX Com channel and I actually walk you through every step. I know it's a half hour long video, but it's still very helpful. Here's an SLI bridge, which tells us that this board, even though it wasn't anywhere on the outside of the box, actually supports uh, not only SLI, but also Crossfire X. So this is a fully dual PCI Express compatible board. And while it does have three PCIe 16X slots, and it probably will work in th a three-way configuration, bear in mind that there's only so many PCIe lanes on the P67A chipset. So you know what, I'll get into that a little bit more once we're looking at the PCIe lanes. Why don't we look at the overall layout of the board. First of all, matte black PCB, love it. This is a great move from Gigabyte. It looks phenomenal. It's great whether you have don't have a system window because then what do you care? Or if you do have a system window, it looks really good, especially if you're using like uh, lights because a matte black PCB won't reflect and glare off of it. It'll just look really dark and you'll be able to light up the things that you want to see, which is usually not your motherboard. Mind you, with a board like this, I might want to see it. So the cameraman's having a look at the 20 phase power right now, as well as the cooling on the VRM, as well as the chipset. So we have heat pipes connecting all of those different coolers. We have our socket right here in the middle. As I said before, this is an LGA 1155 socket, so you got support for the ever popular Core i5 2500K as well as the i7 2600K. Anything on an 1155 socket will work in here, but bear in mind this is a P67 board, so that means there are no display outputs on the back, so you will not have support for onboard video. You will have to add a dedicated graphics card. In terms of power, We've got our 8-pin connector up here in the top left, exactly where it belongs, as well as our 24-pin connector over here on the right, also exactly where it belongs. P67, all these boards are going to have full support for dual-channel DDR3 memory. And there's those logos we were missing on the front of the board, Crossfire X as well as SLI. So yes, they are fully supported. I'm not making things up. Down here on the side of the board, we have some fluff. And then we also have four SATA 2 3 gigabit per second ports, as well as two SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports.
ports. So these are actually running off of the Intel chipset now, which is uh, a pretty big improvement, and that makes me pretty happy. Next, we have our front panel plugs. We have two front panel USB ports. We have, wow, two front panel USB 3.0 headers. So that means this board supports a total of eight USB 3.0 ports. Very, very cool. Then we have a FireWire port as well as our front panel audio in its traditional gigabyte location over here right behind the audio jacks. So let's have a look at the slot layout. We have two PCIe Oh, yeah, it has onboard power. Thank you, cameraman. It also has an onboard reset switch as well as a clear CMOS switch. I love this location for these buttons because unlike the ones down at the very bottom edge of the board, if you plug a graphics card in, okay, so let's say you have a graphics card here. Well, these aren't covered. You can actually, you can actually access these, so that's uh, pretty cool. <laughs> the power, uh, power word is upside down. I wonder if somebody... Uh, wonder if somebody put that on wrong, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, you know what? Hey, if you guys have a UD5 board, please post a comment and let me know if your power switch is right side up or if yours is upside down like this one. It won't affect the functionality since it's just shorting it out and it's not, uh, it doesn't matter the polarity, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty interesting. Okay, so we have two PCIe 1X slots, two PCI slots, and three PCIe 16X slots. But I want to tell you guys, this one, you can see right here, you can actually see the wires, is wired for full PCIe 16X. This will run at 16X if you have one card installed. This one right here, you can clearly see, is wired only for 8X. This one, is active as soon as you plug a card into it and that will reduce the available bandwidth to this guy to 8x. So if you're running two cards, you're gonna be in 8x, 8x mode. This last one is actually only wired for PCIe 4x. And so really a three-way graphics card configuration is not really optimal for this board. I would probably use this for some other kind of expansion card, like a RAID card, or uh, yeah, like an OCZ Revo drive would be a perfect example of what I would use this guy for. So if you are running dual graphics, available you will have one PCIe 1X slot, one PCI slot for any legacy devices, as well as one PCIe 4X slot. So let's move around to the back and have a look at the IO shield. We have one of these legacy PS2 ports. Big fan of that, actually, I still like to see it. We have one, two, three, four, five, six USB 2.0 ports. And actually, hold on, hold on, let me double check. I can't tell, yeah, yeah. Okay, so these are eSATA USB combo ports. Okay, so that means we have two eSATA ports, two FireWire, optical as well as coaxial audio out. And we have four USB 3.0 ports. Remember, that's a total of eight gigabit ethernet as well as 7.1 audio out. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the Gigabyte P67A UD5. LGA 1155 motherboard. Oh, hey, here's one more cool thing about this board. Look at that. They used actual proper spring-loaded screws with with plastic washers to ensure that there's no issues with the uh, with the hardware that they're using to affix all of these chipset coolers and whatnot. I'm not a big fan of push pins. Love to see the little extra effort put in by Gigabyte on those kinds of fine finishing touches.